guys, so I'm doing a video today on journaling and goal setting. This was a requested video. It really helps out when you guys out there tell me what you like to see and what you want to hear. And first, I want to give a little shout out to a brand that I'm an ambassador for. I have the t-shirt on right now. The Beauty and Strength. There's their awesome logo right there on the bottom. So cute. And that's uh, Never Too Pretty brand. If you guys want some awesome gear like this, and I've been wearing some of their really awesome stuff um, on my Instagram, Too Pretty brand is coming out with their newest line. It's called Never Too Pretty To Be Kind. So if you use the code TPKIND, you guys can get 25% off. And I really love representing this company. They're all about women empowerment. Their message is for girls to try new things and to put themselves out there because no one should tell you that you have to look or be a certain way. I just love, I love their message. So we're gonna start with goal setting and with kind of the biggest one, which would be setting your goal for the year. It's helpful to have an idea of what you're working for throughout the year. You have like a bigger competition at the end of the year, you know, it's it's gonna vary from person to person. It doesn't always have to be this huge lofty goal. Sometimes it seems like a daunting task because, you know, someone else is having these goals that maybe seem a lot bigger than yours, but I think it's okay to kind of have a goal that might seem smaller to some people um, because if it's your goal, that's the most important thing. I just think every goal is a valuable goal no matter the size comparable to someone. I'm just saying don't compare your goal to someone else's. It really helps to, to write all this down. Get out a piece of paper, computer, phone, whatever, and start taking some notes. I've got a little example here for you guys of how you can journal and how you kind of write this out. I've done a little bit shorthand and we can talk about um, a lot of the process goals. First, at the top, I've got my long-term goal. Here, for example, I put in here national champion. You put in whatever whatever fits for you. This is really individual, like I said before. If it's placing at nationals, if it's, if it's qualifying for a big tournament, then that's the most important thing. Once again, this is not, not to judge anyone's long-term goal. Next is short-term goals. I put four examples here. So I put compete at five big competitions, improve time management, extra work after practice, and put extra focus on school. A lot of times people forget to add some of their personal life, and that's just as important because if you are totally focused on your sport goals, you let those other sides of your life and of your personal life kind of fall apart, then those are the things that might kind of make your athletic career a lot harder. Especially if you're an athlete in school, it's really important to make sure that your your grades are what they should be and that you're doing the things you need to in the classroom so you can compete. And then here on the bottom are gonna be your process goals. For the sections, I have your sport, for me, wrestling, um, strength and conditioning, nutrition, hydration, and personal life. So your process goals are gonna be pretty concise and pretty focused. And when it comes down to it, those process goals, those action items, those are really the things that you can control. I think it's important to talk about the mentality here when it comes to goal setting, especially for, for athletes, especially for competition where there's so many variables. Just because you set those goals, it doesn't always mean that that's exactly what's gonna happen. As an athlete, you have to learn how to be flexible, and the one thing that you can focus on and that you can control are your process goals. Kind of give you guys some examples of my process goals throughout the day, the things that I can control in, in the wrestling room that will then help me to get to my next, to my small goals, and then to my bigger goals. For me, refining basic movements in the wrestling room or individual time. So whether that's my level penetration, specifically double leg or single leg, working on footwork, making sure that I'm doing extra work where my feet are moving more, where I'm working on more dynamic movements. And the examples can go on and on. I think it's important to not overwhelm yourself with too many things because it's, it's gonna change, it's gonna kinda shift. These process goals are things you're gonna need to accomplish 
and, and be actively working on daily. It's looking at the little processes, the little things throughout the day that's gonna help you to get your short-term goals met. And let's say maybe something in this section that I created for process goals right here, maybe it's one that you actually don't even do right now. Let's say nutrition and hydration is one that you haven't even really focused on, and that's okay. So maybe in that section, maybe you just put one bullet point and it's, you know, find the right person who can start giving you information. If that's where you need to start, then make it one bullet point. I think the most important thing is to remember that you don't need to overwhelm yourself. And even if you don't think right now, the first time you do these, it addresses everything you need, that's totally okay because as time goes on and as you compete and as you, you know, have your daily practices, those kind of things are gonna to continue to redefine themselves and maybe it's something that you thought was really important now and maybe later it's not as important as you thought it was and that's totally okay. So now I'm gonna to talk to you guys about this guy, my daily journal and why I bring it to practice every day and the specific things that I write in there. So obviously it's really important to make sure you date everything. If I had a training session with a specific coach, I'll make sure that I write who the coach was that I was working with. I'll also include, typically right before practice, just kind of noticing how I'm feeling. That's a sports psychology technique and it's all about just observing where you are at that moment without judgment. Then I will make sure that I write my focus areas and these are things that either I know I've needed to work on because of my process goals, they're the things that I, I always need to include, um, or it's something that I know I've been currently working on. It helps me to write it right before practice. Sometimes it's just too late to kind of write after practice, oh I should have worked on this or I should have done that. It's not just one thing that you're working on at the end, it's kind of almost like dictating the theme of the way your practice is going to be set. So then after practice, I'll write down the things that I worked on or things that didn't work in practice. I'll kind of write the same thing that I did at the beginning. I'll notice where I am, I'll, I'll talk about the things that I noticed during practice. And once again, without judgment, notice how you felt and move on. So hopefully these things helped you guys out. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you guys like this. I think sometimes having specific questions is really helpful. Go ahead and subscribe. Let me know what you guys liked and what you didn't like. So thanks guys. Bye.